Welcome back everybody. My name is Tucker and in the second of today's videos, we're gonna be talking about the Minnesota Timberwolves, a team that I think came into this year with realistic playoff hopes. I think they looked at their roster and they said, you know, I know that the West is really, really tough this year, but you know, there, there's talent here that if things go right, we could be a playoff team this season, which would be a huge step forward for this very young roster still uh, and, a, and a franchise that's only made playoffs once since Kevin Garnett was there. And that was the Jimmy Butler season a few years ago. So uh, like when you look up and down the roster before the season started, got Carl Anthony Towns, D'Angelo Russell, great combination, great pick and roll duo. You've got guys on the wings like Anthony Edwards, who's the rookie. You've got Malik Beasley. You've got a you know another nice point guard in Ricky Rubio. And it didn't seem like they were going to really be able to guard, but it was an exciting team. It's a team that certainly was going to be able to score. Um, and all that excitement should have turned into good offense and not great defense. But to begin the season, it's turned into absolutely nothing. They've been awful defensively, and they haven't really been good on offense either. Um, D'Angelo Russell's been fine. Like, typical line for him. It'd be nice if the turnovers would, turnovers would go down, but we pretty much know we're getting out of D'Angelo Russell at this point. He's probably going to shoot 40% from three, like 43% for the field. Going to average about 20 and five, 20 and six, handful of turnovers. That's what D'Angelo Russell is going to give you. He's been fine. Um, you know, I, I think Malik Beasley's actually been really good, uh, has struggled at times from three point range, but outside of that, I think he's been really good. He's been scoring the ball well. It's been a nice complimentary score for them, uh, which is good because, you know, they paid him based off a really, really good second half of the year last year, and he has continued that. Uh, so that's good for them. The rookie, Anthony Edwards, I like better now than I did um, initially. He's definitely shown some flashes. He's an incredible athlete. Uh, and if he gets to the rim, it, it's over. Like he's getting fouled or he's finishing. Uh, Going to continue to work on the mid range and, and, and the three and all that good stuff. But I think considering all the other perimeter depth they already had in this roster, Anthony Edwards has done about as good of a job as you could expect him to early in the season. And if he can become a really good defender as well, that's huge for them long-term to have a two-way guy like him because they don't really have two-way players um, on this roster. The problem is the rest of the guys in the roster are pretty one-dimensional. They're either all offense, which they have plenty of, or they're all defense. I mean, someone like Josh Okogie has, he still can't shoot. So like you can't play him any kind of significant minutes if you can't make shots off the ball unless you want to play him at the five. Like it's so frustrating because he's like, he's the player that this roster needs to help them defensively. And he just can't figure out how to make jump shots. It's incredibly frustrating. Uh, and like I said, the other guys in the roster, for the most part, they just can't really guard. So they can't really be on the floor. Um, and of course, all this is made even worse by the fact that Carl Anthony Towns has only played two games this year due to a wrist injury. Uh, we still don't really know when he's going to be coming back. It's still like a week to week thing. And their front court rotation was thin as it was, even with Carl Anthony Towns healthy. I mean, they're stuck starting guys like Ed Davis and, and playing, you know, Naz Reed 25 minutes a night, uh, who's a fine player. Jared Vanderbilt got a ton of minutes last night. And uh, big shout out to Jared Vanderbilt because last night, the Wolves were, they, they ended up losing the game, but they were down big after the first quarter. Jared Vanderbilt comes in in the second quarter and the Timberwolves destroyed the Nuggets that whole quarter. And it's a super tough matchup for him because he's, but he's essentially a four playing the five. He's super skinny, but he's really strong. And he's got to defend Nikola Jokic one-on-one. -on -one. And he frustrated Jokic to the point where like, Jokic almost got ejected because if he he was so frustrated with the foul calls. Yeah, there was some missed calls, but uh, big shout out to Jared Vanderbilt. The game that I watched last night, he was awesome. Energy, effort, finishing at the rim, all that good stuff. Um, but that's not going to be a long-term solution for them. You know what I mean? Uh, they need to have Carl Anthony Towns back and hopefully he does come back and is healthy. Uh, but even outside of that, this is a roster that has plenty of issues. And again, th you know, they were never going to be great defensively, but I think my expectations were higher than being the worst defensive team, team in the league to this point. Um, and until Cat comes back, offense is going to be an issue as well, clearly, based off these first handful of games. Um, and this is made even worse by the fact that they owe a top three protected pick to Golden State for next season. And, you know, unless they're really, really bad, um, it's possible they end up not getting any better next year because they don't have their pick and what is supposed to be a you know pretty good draft class and you know even if like they have the second best odds it's still possible that you know they drop and they give up the fourth pick to golden state which would be a nightmare scenario for them now certainly there's upside moving forward for this group it's in, it's it's still a very young roster i mean the guys that they're counting on are like malik beasley who's young d'angelo russell anthony edwards who's a rookie cat who you know is still young ish and obviously hasn't been playing uh, so uh, the more comfortable these guys get throughout the season ideally the better they should get and then of course you know when cat comes back they're going to be winning more games than they are right now uh without him but 
ideally, you know, what happens the rest of the way for Minnesota, if you're looking for like, you know, how can they turn it around? How can they be like a borderline playoff team? Well, Edwards continues to get better and he established himself, establishes himself as like, hey, y'all need to put me in the starting lineup because I can guard somebody. Like he had some really good sequences in the preseason and some to begin this season as well, where individually in one-on-one -on -one defense, he was incredible. And if he can provide them that and get to the rim, knock down some shots, he's going to be a starter. And, and, and ideally, he becomes that guy throughout the year. They're like, okay, we've got D'Lo, we've got Cap. Anthony Edwards is in between all that. He's going to guard. He's going to play extremely hard. He's going to get to the rim, and he's going to be that athleticism X factor for us. Ideally, that's what happens there. Cat comes back and is awesome, like all NBA awesome. And they go from there and potentially make a push towards the end of the season. That's the ideal scenario. Now, the worst case scenario is Cat continues to miss time. When he does come back, he still doesn't look super healthy. Um, you know, things start to go down the tank to the point where everybody's just trying to get theirs. You know, D'Lo is not facilitating Malik Beasley. just takes the shot every single time he gets the basketball. Anthony Edwards develops bad habits because he's just so frustrated with losing. And he just wants to put up big numbers and win rookie of the year. And the entire team has a bad attitude and develops bad habits. That's the worst case scenario. I think at the end of the day, it'll be somewhere in between. Cat coming back and being healthy will be huge for them at whatever point that does happen. And Edwards should continue to get better um, throughout the season. The, the, the positive thing, though, for them is if they can manage to keep this pick. It's so crazy to be thinking already about this top three protected 2021 pick. But if they can manage to keep this pick and take a player in the top three, then you know, they can be a really, really good team next year. I mean, they're not really losing anybody for next year. Pretty much everybody is under contract. And even if Towns or Russell or somebody is unhappy, they're both under contract for like three more seasons. So like they're going to play unless unless Minnesota wants to trade them. Um, I don't think we're at the point now where guys with three and a half years left on their deal can, you know, request a trade and end up being moved. So it's all about that pick for them moving forward, you know, outside of this season. If they can keep the pick, uh, you know, they've got other guys coming back next year. There should be some internal improvement. And then we'll see what they can do moving forward from there. So that's kind of the blueprint for Minnesota. Focus on the young guys. Hopefully you can improve. Find a way to get better defensively. Keep that top three pick and then go forward from there. Um, if that doesn't happen and they lose their pick and guys get unhappy, things can get really, 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 really bad here in Minnesota. I know that's a dark take just like seven or eight games into the year. Um, but unfortunately, it's just such a tough West. They just aren't good enough defensively. They're too young. And I think it's pretty clear that they're going to be on the outside looking into the playoff picture at this point, uh, unless Towns comes back and is awesome. And if you're watching this video two months from now and Towns came back and is like a first team all NBA guy and is absolutely destroying teams. OK, then then, then I'll, I'll take the out. But for right now, um, it looks like another lost season, unfortunately in minnesota but that is going to be the end of the second video of today thank you all very much for watching once again my name is tucker if you missed any of my previous videos then be sure to check out the boxes on screen i upload twice today every day uh, so, so it's a great place for consistent nba content you can also check me out at various socials at the bottom of the screen there's a link tree down in the description below with all those things said i hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day once again my name is tucker and i will see you all next time